Hi, my name is Deborah Meal, and I am the president and the founder of the Meal Foundation. I'm here today to talk to you about joyful transformation. I got into this profession to do what it is that I do um, because um, there was a hardship within my family uh, and in my life. I started out as a paramedic and I married my soulmate. He is absolutely the most intelligent, creative, sensual, wonderful man that I'd ever met. And 18 months later, he was diagnosed with bipolar disorder. Our life was in chaos. Um, there had been multiple um, events. Um, he was out of work uh, and had gone back to school, couldn't get a job. Uh, and then there was a road rage incident uh, as we were driving 140 miles an hour um, down the freeway in uh, Arizona. Uh, we managed to make it out of that event, obviously. And uh, he collapsed on the bathroom floor in our home, rocking and screaming uh, that he wanted to die. And at that point, I had a decision to make in my life in regards to how it is that the rest of my life would look. So um, I became an ordained minister, and I am trained in dialectical behavioral therapy. So what I'm going to talk to you today, though, is about moving from where you're at in a place in your life that feels uncomfortable and how to do that with joy and ease. And I want you to know personally, I tend to be a very um, controlling individual. I like things done a certain way. I like them done on time. Uh, there are many things about my life uh, that I like to control. And once I took my hands off the reins and I became willing, I want you to know that the divine showed me exactly where we were going to be in our lives and what our lives were going to look like. And I'm going to offer that to you today to know that when you are no longer resistant to change, when you can willingly step into the fire, and again, relax as you're stepping into the fire. And believe it or not, those are skills that you can actually learn. When you can relax and step into that flame, what happens is, is that it starts to happen faster and faster and faster. And you, your uncomfortableness then begins to change. Please tell me this is going to work. Hello. Oh, let's try that. There we go. So I want you to know that for most of my clients and for most of my family, people that I'm around, the thing that's missing in your life is actually stepping into your deep authenticity. Your authenticity happens because we are spiritual beings having a human existence. When we, I believe that when we come to, into, onto this planet, we have a plan. And then, of course, we no longer know what that plan is. There are certain lessons in our life that we're going to learn. Some of those lessons are really, really uncomfortable. And what happens is, though, is that we're not given any skills. Thousands of years ago, we were very tribal. And we had elders that taught us certain skills and a certain way of living. When we get connected with the earth, when we get connected to the ether, again, our lives then are shaped in a way um, that again allow us and allow the divine to move through us to be able to experience this particular lifetime and this particular planet with ease and with grace. So if you feel like that you're not in the flow and again or if you know people that don't feel like they're in the flow the thing that's missing is that particular connection. When you're in the flow, when you're in the vortex, whatever it is that you want to call it, when you step into that flow, your life starts to change. You move away from chaos. You step into peace. You step into grace. You step into a particular type of understanding and learning that you didn't have access to before. So everyone falls out of alignment from time to time. But again, it's being able to shift your emotion so our thoughts plus our emotion equal our behavior 100% of the time. It's actually a scientific formula. And so if my actions don't line up with who I am, it's because I have thoughts and or stinking thinking that doesn't work, or I have emotional needs that aren't being met, or emotions that are actually just unbalanced. So if I want to change my action, and it doesn't matter what that action is, it can be something as simple as not eating donuts in the morning for breakfast. 
If I want to change that action, I either have to change my thinking or I have to change my emotion to that particular action. When I do that, then my actions automatically change. So how do we do this? The first thing you have to do is be able to practice mindfulness. Lots and lots has been written about mindfulness, but I'm going to tell you, um, again, I was probably <clears throat> nearly 40 before it finally all clicked together for me. There's a set of skills. There's the what skills to mindfulness and the how skills to mindfulness. Mindfulness starts out by observing, being able to observe your own thinking. We believe at this time that we're the only mammals on the planet that can actually observe their own thinking. And what that means is, is that unlike the possum that stands on the edge of the road, he doesn't see the big red truck and think to himself, boy, today is a day that I think that I'm going to step out there and see if this is a good time to do this. That doesn't go on for the possum. He just smells something along the edge of the road and he decides to cross that road and the big red truck comes and hits him. We, on the other hand, have the ability to think about our own thinking. So we can, again, make a decision. And we do that based upon our prefrontal cortex. Our prefrontal cortex is that gray matter behind your eyebrows. And I want you to know it's your insight, hindsight, and foresight. And we believe at this time that we're the only animals that can actually do that on the planet at this time. Our insight, hindsight, and foresight is directly related to, again, how our brain works, so the chemistry within our brain, and it also is directly related to our environment. And as we learn to control our own thinking, to actually observe our own thinking, we can then make choice. If you cannot control your own thinking, I guarantee you, you will never be able to have control of your own actions, period. It's just that simple. And again, lots has been written about that, but it's a very, very simple formula. So I can change my brain chemistry, I can change my environment, and when I change those particular things, then my thinking actually starts to change. And I can do that. Alpha, beta, theta waves, all of that stuff is really important. And it's important to understand and know those things about the brain, but the main thing that you have to know is that you can actually control your own thinking. Your brain is not supposed to be like an unruly two-year-old in the supermarket. That's not how it's supposed to be. You're supposed to be able to control your own thinking to be able to control your own actions. And we do that through being mindfully aware of our own stinking thinking. If you're not mindfully aware, or you don't know what your own stinking thinking is, I want you to know that Albert Ellis in the 1950s actually coined the phrase irrational beliefs. And there are the 10 of the most common irrational beliefs, such as, um, I want everybody to love me and accept me no matter what. That's an irrational belief. People aren't going to just love you and accept you. And by the way, your family is the least likely to love and accept you all the time anyway. So the other thing is that anything new and different, I should be terrified of or afraid of. All of my clients with anxiety have that irrational belief. They're unwilling to step into new circumstances and new situations. And until they get rid of that irrational belief, I want you to know that that underlying fear continues to control them. So if you want to move out of, again, uh, chaos and the circle of chaos and the circle of suffering and the circle of drama, you must be able to control your own thinking. And by the way, um, you can start with children as young as four being able to teach them to think about their own thoughts. And you just do that very gently. Um, and again, they get it really, really easily. Tolerance. I want you to know that what we do um, is when we start to control our own thinking is we raise our threshold to tolerate other human beings on this particular planet. Um, I don't know about you, but I've been in, uh, in my area, it's Walmart, on certain days, and it feels like everybody has lost their mind. And as I observe my own thinking about that and my own judgment about that, I again then have a choice to move away from that thinking because that particular thinking isn't helpful to the event.
as I'm pushing my cart through Walmart and I'm judgmentally um, thinking about the woman in front of me that's dressed in purple with her slippers on and her little fairy wings or whatever the case may be. I have all kinds of things that run through my mind about that because I'm a human being. And as a human being, we are wired to judge absolutely everything. We do that because of fight and flight. We want to be in a survival kind of state. We want to live. And so what happens is, is that we become judgmental because of that. As I watch my judgments, I then make a choice if this is helpful to me and my particular situation. If it's not helpful, then I make a new choice. As I make a new choice, I raise my threshold to, to tolerate the stress. So, for example, um, I was pushing my cart outside, again, uh, happens to be Walmart, and somebody bangs their cart into my car. Now, again, <laughs> I can think that that person is rude, irresponsible, illogical, and all of those things, or I can gently say to myself, uh, this is an unfortunate event, and I'm just now going to take care of it. I don't have to judge that individual. I don't have to judge that person. I don't even have to judge that particular situation. The moment I do that, I step into the flow, again, of being more in tune um, with the universe, being more in tune, again, with who mm -hmm. I am at a core level. Anytime I'm in a situation that feels uncomfortable to me, that I can't solve the problem immediately, what I need to think about is how I'm going to tolerate it. And I tolerate that because wise mind accepts. It's an interesting thought, isn't it? It's interesting that in the case of Solomon and the Bible, um, Solomon was considered the wisest of all men at the time. And it's very fascinating if you read some of that, um, whether you believe in scripture or not, just the theory behind it. And as our minds, again, are balanced between the logic and between our emotion, we step into that power, into that vortex of learning that allows us to then be able to make new choices. So if I'm in a situation where I can't solve the problem, what I need to do is I need to busy myself. And I do that through activities. If I can't solve the problem, um, one of the Buddhist concepts is we need to chop wood and carry water which means that I need to do the dishes, I need to vacuum, I need to go for a walk in the park, I need to get things done in that particular moment for that day. I can contribute, again, to my neighbors, to my family, I can bake cookies, I can go and visit somebody, I can do comparison, and my comparison is always this, if it's not as bad as Auschwitz was, then I can live through anything. <laughs> That's the bottom line. So as I look at the situation that I'm in, however painful it is, I have the ability to compare it to something much, much worse on this planet. And as I do that, again, I step into the divine flow. Um, emotional opposites, I want you to know, is really important. I tell all of my clients that come to me, if you're sad and you're depressed, stay away from those songs for somebody done somebody wrong song. Don't do that. Stay away from those songs, again, where she takes a Louisville slugger to both headlights, slash her, slashes his tires, and carves her name into his leather seats. Don't listen to that stuff. That stuff is not going to promote your peace and your well-being. Pushing away means I'm actually going to push the situation away, and I'm going to make a decision to not deal with it today, which then means that I capture my own thinking, and every time I start to think about a particular problem, I again rein my thoughts back in. Again, it's a process of mindfulness to be able to do that. And then I can use sensations. I can get into a cold shower. I can take a hot bath. I can do whatever it is that I need to do to make sure that my body is aligned with my mind. Tolerance is willingness. It means that I've decided I don't need to be right in the situation, and it means that I'm going to do my best to do just what's needed in that particular moment. It's a practice to not be righteous all of the time, and I want you to know it doesn't matter what it is. It can be something as nagging your significant other to pick up their socks. When you do that, 
It's one thing to ask, it's another thing to do it with, again, an air of judgment, which then places you in a situation where, again, you're keeping score or keeping track. So what affects your resilience? It's a real simple thing that they've said in AA for a long time, hungry, angry, lonely, tired. That means you should halt. And again, not make any judgments about a particular situation and most likely not have a conversation. One of the skills, again, that's really, really undertaught in this world is the ability to keep your lips pressed together and not speak. We've been taught for years and years that I should stand up and I should speak my truth and I should air it all out and I should do whatever it is I need to do. There's a time and a place for that. Uh, and it's usually not when you think that it is. Okay? So because that means that you're in emotional mind and you're making that choice based upon the way that you feel in the moment, not based upon the way that you think that, again, um, the situation could benefit by you not, again, doing that particular thing. So physical illness, we need to take care of physical illness, again, or we're going to be in that cycle of suffering all the time, again. Um, it's important um, to be able to eat properly. If you're eating ding-dongs and ho-hos in the morning for breakfast and chugging it with chocolate milk, um, again, you're going to be an emotional roller coaster all of the time. Your mind, and again, and your emotion, your logic and your emotion are never going to make a connection. You're going to never fully turn on your prefrontal cortex. Avoid, avoid mult-altering activities or drugs. Um, there's some great things about psychedelics right now. If you're ready for psychedelics, by all means, you can certainly do that. Again, it's about, though, again, making sure that, again, your emotion and your logic together have made that choice, and it's not just because it's the latest fad. Sleep is really, really important. Most uh, human beings don't get enough sleep or they don't get the right sleep. And the right sleep means, again, it's non-medicated sleep. If you're using something, a sleep aid, that's not natural, it ruins your delta brain waves. If it ruins your delta brain waves, you will be clinically depressed. Okay? And then you'll need to take an antidepressant, or you'll think that you need to take an antidepressant. Again, if you're married to the wrong person, or if you're in the wrong job, I want you to know that there's not a pill to fix that. And that's the society, again, that we, again, uh, live in today. Exercise, really, really important, and it doesn't matter what kind of exercise you do. There's a hundred ways to jog or do yoga or anything like that, and I had a really great doctor tell me that sex three times a week that makes you sweaty works also. <laughs> so, when you step in to your divine purpose, what you're going to feel is confident and self-competent. Confidence we talk about all the time, but competency we don't so much. When you step into that flow, it's because you're doing the, what's right for you. It's not what your dad thinks or what your mother thinks or what your spouse thinks or what your kids want you to do. If you're a dentist and you hate being a dentist, you know what? You got to get out and you got to downsize and you got to make a difference. And the way that you do that is you tell everybody, you get ready for the emotional blast that you're going to feel and you get ready to step into that divine flow because once you step into that divine flow, your life, your life will never be the same again. Thank you.